In the first video, we looked at some general principles relating size and distance, and also at the special cases of the size of the Earth and the size and distance of the Moon. Now, those things are so close that they're a little bit of a special case. So, uh, in this uh, video, where we're going to look at the size and distances of Sun and other planets, we're going to introduce a very general technique that's called parallax. And parallax is just the shift in where a, an object appears to be depending on where you observe it. So to make that more concrete, stick out your finger, do this along with me, and close one eye and notice where it looks to be against the background. Now open the other, oh, other eye and close that eye and you'll notice, and I'll do it rapidly back and forth, you'll notice that the apparent position of your finger appears to shift against the background. And if you actually hold your finger much closer and do the same thing, the shift is much larger. And so that's basic geometry. That's, uh, we can look at that right here. So we have a background of objects and we have something that we're looking at and we have two eyes here. Okay, when one eye looks at the object, we'll draw a straight line from the eye of that object. Well, it looks like it's close to this star in the background here. But when the other eye looks at it, draw a straight line again, and just continue that straight line, well, it looks like it's much closer to that star over there. So that's the shift. And you'll notice that if the eyes were further apart, and again, these don't have to be eyes. This could be two cameras located hundreds of miles apart on Earth or something like that. It's just two observers. We draw the eyes or observers farther apart. We get a bigger angle. Now the star looks like it's against that one. Okay, the shift is bigger. So we'll call this angle uh, theta. So that's the angle of parallax. And so to make it a big angle that you can observe easily, you want to get your observing stations farther apart. The other thing that happens is if you were to look at more distant objects, say over here, the parallax angle gets small again. Okay, so for really distant objects, this angle is going to be so small that we won't be able to measure it. But it should be fine for things in the solar system. So the Greeks knew about this general principle, and um, they should have been able to apply it to the sun and get the distance of the sun. But of course, the sun is so bright that you can't see anything uh, in the background. And now I'll explain how measuring the parallax to some other planets, where you can't see the background, actually helps you get the distance to the sun. And the key to that is Kepler's third law. So let me redraw this scenario. And we'll have, say, the sun here and Earth here. And Earth is going around in a roughly circular orbit with a distance of one astronomical unit. Now we call it an astronomical unit because uh, at a certain point, uh, hundreds of years ago, we didn't know what it was in miles. So we just call it an astronomical unit. And actually, it turns out to be um, 150 million kilometers, just to give you an idea. But let's pretend we don't know that yet. And we have other planets that are going around on bigger orbits. Let's say this is Mars. And the radius of Mars' orbit, we'll call that A, technically the semi-major axis, but we don't need to go into that level of detail, is 1.7 AU. But again, we haven't measured that. I'm just telling you that for your information. The key thing that Kepler found to actually figure this out was called Kepler's third law. And that says that A cubed, remember A is the size of the orbit, is equal to P squared. Now, P is the period, the time it takes to go around, and that's really easy to measure, okay? You just wait enough years for the planet to come back to the same position, and that's the period. So for Jupiter, for example, we know it takes 12 years to go around, roughly, and so if you take 12 squared, we get 144, and so we need some number which, when it's cubed, equals 144, and that turns out to be roughly 5. So what we've done is we've taken something easy to observe, the period, and Kepler's third law tells us how to translate it, that into something that's really hard to observe, which is the size of the orbit. 
So that's how we get from Mars, knowing that it had a 1.9 year period, that's how we get to 1.7 astronomical unit size of the orbit. So this is a huge breakthrough. We know the relative sizes of all the planets' orbits, but we still don't know the absolute sizes. So to get the absolute size, what you want to do is just simply take the parallax to Mars. And so that was done in the late 1600s. And so prior to that measurement, Kepler's third law gave us a scale model of the solar system. We knew all the relative sizes of the orbits, but we didn't know any one absolute distance. This measurement of the parallax of Mars gave us that absolute measurement. And a little bit later, about 100 years later, um, basically the parallax of Venus was measured when Venus went between the Earth and the Sun, and we could see it move across the Sun. That gave us a much more accurate measurement of the distance of the solar system. So, although the Greeks knew the principle of parallax and the size and distance of the Earth, size and distance of the Moon, um, mankind had to wait almost 2,000 years until the very late 1600s to figure out the size of the solar system. In the next video, we'll look at the distances of other stars. See you next time.